It's an honor to accept this award on behalf of Marion Hollins, but I do so just as one of many who have benefited from Marion's vision, especially all the members past and present of Cypress Point, Pasta Tiempo, and the Women's National Golf and Tennis Club. Many people know Cypress Point as Marion's love letter to golf on the Pacific Ocean, or Pasta Tiempo, described as her elegant dream. But we should also remember Marion's first inspiration, the Women's National, a groundbreaking creation for women only that sadly disappeared amidst the economic tailspin of the Depression. I also want to acknowledge the members of the Hollins family, in particular Phyllis Thoreau and Tony Grissom, both here today, who've done so much to keep their Aunt Marion's memory alive. It's been nearly 100 years since the beauty of a picturesque bit of Pacific coastline called Cypress Point captured the imagination of Marion Hollins. Not only did she establish a thrilling golf course there, but she assembled a club membership befitting that location, one that included both men and women from the very beginning. As to Marion's decisive shot at the 16th hole, well, I'm sure she took great pleasure in actually landing her drive on the proposed green that day. I'd wager she delighted even more in winning the par three versus par four debate. That's why I sort of believe the family lore passed along by Marion's niece, that having cleared the water with her first shot, Marion did it twice more just to prove the point. More than merely accepting Marion's challenging vision, however, Alistair McKenzie, in the end, seemed to embrace it wholeheartedly as he later wrote of the 16th hole that the amazing thrill of driving successfully over the ocean more than compensates for the loss of a dozen balls. Personally, I doubt if he ever could have imagined the true number of golf balls lost in the ocean there since 1928. But Mackenzie's sentiments remain undeniably true today, and we have Marion to thank for it. Marion lived a glamorous and accomplished life, but one that ended too quickly. When the women's amateur champion and first captain of the U.S. Curtis Cup team died in 1944 at the age of 51, her state lacked the funds for a proper grave and marker. So Sam Morse, the visionary de developer of golf on the Monterey Peninsula, and the man that brought her to Pebble Beach, stepped in and funded a plot and a simple stone tablet for her. Eventually, her gravesite would become one of the most frequently visited in its cemetery in Monterey, California. In honor of Marion's selection to the World Golf Hall of Fame last year, the Hollins family chose to enhance her burial site and stall a new gravestone chronicling her major achievements. Uncertain what to do with the marker, originally purchased by Sam Morse, the Hollins family contacted Cypress Point about donating it to the club. Coincidentally, only a few days before, our club had decided to construct a new terrace overlooking the 16th hole and to name it the Hollins Terrace. Of course, we accepted the grift enthusiastically, and we've embedded it, the headstone in the Holland Terrace wall, where it overlooks the site of Marion's most celebrated creation. It's our hope that this monument in its new location will endure as a testament to her capability as a player, her vision as a golf designer and architect, not to mention her irrepressible competitive spirit. Rest peacefully, Marion. You will not be forgotten.